And now to a shocking story out of Florida, a 15-year-old boy in the fight for his life after police say a group of teenagers intentionally set him on fire. We're going to talk with that boy's mom in just a moment, but first, NBC's Carrie Sanders has the details. 15-year-old Michael Brewer, barely alive, say paramedics, was flown to the hospital, burns over 80% of his body. Investigators say the Florida teenager was targeted by five classmates who allegedly doused him with rubbing alcohol and then lit him on fire. One minute I saw my brother perfectly fine telling me he was going to go meet his friends and the next minute getting a phone call knowing that my brother could be scarred for life. The suspects, one as young as 13 years old, the others 15, face various charges, including attempted murder and aggravated battery. Detectives believe Brewer was attacked after he called police saying one of the suspects tried to steal his father's bike. The teens allegedly retaliated, calling Brewer a snitch and then set him on fire. It's just horrible that these kids would do this to, to our victim. And the victim's going to carry lifelong scars, um, you know, if he survives. It's just a horrible, horrible case. All five suspects are now in juvenile detention. It will be up to the state attorney's office to determine if they will face charges in adult court. That's not uncommon in Florida. In this county, a seven-year-old was once charged as an adult. Attorney Valerie Small-Williams represented that child and now represents one of the suspects in this case. I was a Briar County school teacher, so this hits home as a parent, as a teacher, and just a member of this community. This case is a tragedy. You're going to plea what? Not guilty. Michael Brewer, described by his mother as outgoing, friendly, and fun-loving, is now fighting for his life. For today, Kerry Sanders, NBC News, Fort Lauderdale. Michael Brewer's mother, Valerie, is with us along with his doctor, Nicholas Namias. They are at Jackson Memorial Hospital in Miami. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Valerie, if I could start with you, how is your son, Michael, doing this morning? Um, I'm sure he's doing fine. I haven't had an opportunity to see him yet this morning, um, but I know he's in very good hands and they're taking very good care of my son. Is he able to speak with you at all? Um, not so much speak. He's intubated, um, but he does um, once in a while sit up in bed and uh, point to the tubes in his throat and mouths to me, take them out. Um, he just um, makes motions with his hands that he wants a drink of water. Um, he's very strong, and um, I know he's going to pull through this. It's going to be a long struggle, but he's, he's going to make it through this. How are you dealing with all of this as a mom? This has to be a nightmare for you. It's a complete nightmare. Um, however, I do have a wonderful support system, my family and my friends, and the prayers from everybody around the world. Um, the support system here at the hospital, um, they make sure that I, I eat and that um, if I need to take a nap, they make me take a nap um, because I won't leave his bedside unless they make me leave. Dr. Namias, uh, how would you describe Michael's condition at this point and, and what is he up against in the next few days? Um, he's in the condition you'd expect somebody with such a large burn to be in and, and that is things could be going a whole lot worse than they are. Um, yesterday uh, I was quoted as saying he wasn't out of the woods yet, but they missed the part about where uh, I honestly don't think we're in the woods yet. We still have to get in the woods before we get to come out the other side. It's a, it's a really long process. So things could get worse is what you're suggesting, uh, as in infection possibly or organ failure? All of those things, exactly. Let me ask you, Valerie, um, the boys that are accused of doing this to your son, uh, from what we understand, they are classmates of his. I find probably the, the, the most upsetting thing about this, the fact that they are his age. One is even younger, just 13. Do you know these boys? And what would you like to say to them or about them? I do know them, um, but I really don't want to discuss it. It's too heart-wrenching. I can't even, I can't even think about it. But what I would like to say is that this violence has got to stop. People around the world have got to do something. Violence, um, kids shooting each other in schools or stabbing each other, what they did to my son, we have got to stop this. We need to stop it now. 
our children are our future. We have got to get a hold of this. Please, everybody in this world, please do what you can to work with your neighbors and help our children. We have to do something now to make it stop. Valerie, the fact that Michael didn't go to school on Monday, did he express to you any fear he had of of any of those boys um, retaliating against him because one of them had uh, allegedly stolen his dad's, Michael's dad's uh, bike? He, he was um, petrified to go to school that day. I um, called the administrators and the resource officer at the school and expressed um, that Michael was terrified and he didn't want to come to school that day. Um, we set up an appointment for the resource officer the next morning for him to go talk to her about a game plan about what he could do in school so he could be safe. Um, and it was too late. I want to thank you both for joining us this morning. It's such a difficult time. Valerie, know that uh, our thoughts are with your son, Michael, and with your family as well. And Dr. Namias, thank you for your time as well. Thank you. Thank you. And Matt, we recorded that interview a few um, moments before 7 o'clock this morning. And when it was over, Valerie broke down uh, on camera and we asked if we could share this image of her with our audience. And she said yes. And the reason we wanted to show it was so you could see the real impact that this has had on a mom and a family. And there are so many kids who do violent things out in this country right now, mindless things. And maybe this will send a message to them that uh, what they do has serious repercussions, Matt, not just for the person they injure, but um, for their families, Matt. Exactly. Two things struck me. One was that Valerie was trying so hard to be strong during the interview for her son, and, and clearly this is such a painful moment, and also what the doctor said, that, that we're not even in the woods yet so that we can emerge on the other side. This young man's got a, a big battle ahead of him, Meredith. Absolutely, and our thoughts and prayers again are with Michael and his family.